Hello to all of my students, my families at St. John's. Hello and welcome back to one of our read alouds this week for the reading challenge. Um, so I hope that everybody is having a wonderful Holy Week and your second week of distance learning is going well. So today I'm actually sharing a really special book with you. Um, so this was my favorite children's book, my favorite picture book growing up. Um, I love this book even to this day. It's just one of my favorite stories. Um, and I'll kind of talk about why after I read the book to you guys, but I'm going to go ahead and share with you now. So this book is called Owl Moon and it's by Jane Yolen and the illustrations are by John Scherner. So I'll let you see it kind of up close. So it's called Owl Moon. It was late one winter night, long past my bedtime, when Pa and I went owling. There was no wind, the trees stood still as giant statues, and the moon was so bright, the sky seemed to shine. Somewhere behind us, a train whistle blew, long and low, like a sad, sad song. I could hear it through the woolen cap Pa had pulled down over my ears. A farm dog answered the train, and then a second dog joined in. They sang out, trains and dogs, for a real long time. And when their voices faded away, it was quiet as a dream. We walked on towards the woods, Pa and I. Our feet crunched over the crisp snow and little gray footprints followed us. Pa made a long shadow, but mine was short and round. I had to run after him every now and then to keep up and my short round shadow bumped after me. But I never called out. If you go owling, you have to be quiet. That's what Pa always says. I had been waiting to go owling with Pa for a long, long time. We reached the line of pine trees, black and pointy against the sky, and Pa held up his hand. I stopped right where I was and waited. He looked up, as if searching the stars as if reading a map up there, the moon made his face into a silver mask. Then he called, hoo hoo, hoo hoo, the sound of a great horned owl. Hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo. Has anyone ever heard an owl sound? I think they sound beautiful. I think the way that they call to each other um, is really pretty. And he called out and then again. After each call he was silent and for a moment we both listened but there was no answer. Pa shrugged and I shrugged. I was not disappointed. My brothers all said sometimes there's an owl and sometimes there isn't. but we know that there is, we can see it. Oh, that's a raccoon. Sorry guys. Although I bet the raccoon knows if there's an owl. They're probably tree neighbors. We went into the woods. The shadows were the blackest things I had ever seen. They stained the white snow. My mouth felt furry, for the scarf over it was wet and warm. I didn't ask what kinds of things hide behind black trees in the middle of the night. When you go owling, you have to be brave. Then 
Then we came to a clearing in the dark woods. The moon was high above us. It seemed to fit exactly over the center of the clearing, and the snow below it was whiter than the milk in a cereal bowl. I sighed, and Pa held up his hand at the sound. I put my mittens over the scarf and listened hard, and then Pa called. Hoo-hoo! Hoo-hoo! I listened and looked so hard my ears hurt and my eyes got cloudy with the cold. Pa raised his face to call out again. But before he could open his mouth, an echo came threading its way through the trees. Hoo-hoo! 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 Pa almost smiled. Then he called back. just as if he and the owl were talking about supper or about the woods or the moon or the cold. I took my mitten off the scarf, off my mouth, and I almost smiled too. The owl's call came closer from high up in the trees on the edge of the meadow. Nothing in the meadow moved. All of a sudden, an owl's shadow, part of the big tree shadow, lifted off and flew right over us. We watched silently with our heat in our mouths and the heat of all those words we had not spoken. And the shadow hooted again. Everyone see the owl is right up there. How many of you have seen an owl or maybe have one in your neighborhood? I have one in my neighborhood. Um, I see him at night a lot. He perches on different houses and sometimes I can hear him in the summer um, when I keep my windows open. Pa turned on his big flashlight and caught the owl just as it was landing on a branch. For one minute, three minutes, maybe even a hundred minutes, we stared at one another. Then the owl pumped its great wings and lifted off the branch like a shadow without sound. It flew back into the forest. Time to go home, Pa said to me. I knew that I could talk. I could even laugh out loud, but I was a shadow as we walked home. When you go owling, you don't need words or warm or anything but hope. That's what Pa says, the kind of hope that flies on silent wings under a shining, Owl Moon. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed Owl Moon. Um, you know, there's a couple of reasons that this was my favorite book growing up. So one, um, I always loved winter. So I love snow and I love rain. Um, lots of people love the summer and I like summer too, don't get me wrong. Um, but I really like snow and rain. So that was part of what I think originally why um, my aunt who got it for me gave it to me um, because I loved the winter time. I also really love this story because it's a story about a girl and her dad. And actually the, the author never says whether this character is a girl or a boy. She or he talks about his brothers. Um, but I always inferred that it was a girl. Um, 
because I remember the the adventures that my dad used to take me on. We spent a lot of time outside um, in Boulder, hiking around Chautauqua. We went to Estes Park a lot. Um, so we spent a lot of time in nature um, and I loved going on just kind of those one-on-one -on -one times with him. So this book reminds me a lot um, about that as well. The other thing that I love about this book is that it takes place at night and my family and friends know that I am quite a night owl. So um, I stay up pretty late and I work well at night. So uh, part of it is that, but the other thing that I really enjoy about the message of this book, and it kind of has meaning even deeper right now with everything that we're going through, is that there's beauty in darkness the same that there's beauty in light. So sometimes when we think about darkness, we can think of the dark as being scary or we can't see things in it. However, nighttime and darkness have their own beauty to them and you can see, you just see in a different way. So I think that's fitting for right now because we're in a really uncertain time where we don't know potentially what's going to happen and we can't predict the next day. And it's hard for us to kind of see our way through things right now. But we always have to remember that just like the light, God made the dark. Um, he made both night and day. He made a sun and a moon. And even though sometimes the dark can seem scary and uncertain, anything that, that God has given us is not scary or uncertain. We just have to find a different way um, to look at it and to find the beauty in it. So that's um, one of the messages that I love about Owl Moon. So I hope you enjoyed this read aloud and I hope you've enjoyed our other guest readers this week. Um, once again, guys, the pictures that I'm getting are amazing. I love seeing uh, your favorite books and what you guys are reading at home. So I've already actually built a reading list. Um, so I'm writing down books that you guys have been showing that look really, really fun that I want to check out myself. Okay, so keep up the great work. Okay, Vikings, have a great day. Bye.